Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Don from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And the next time you need a part for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the rear wheel backing plate on this 2002 Chevy Suburban. And we show you on the passenger side, but it's the same procedure on the driver's side. And the items you'll need is new rear wheel backing plate from 1iauto.com, an 8, 12, 18, and 22 millimeter socket and ratchet with a piece of pipe for leverage, an 18 millimeter wrench, a hammer, a flat blade screwdriver, large C-clamp, torque wrench, jack and jack stands, and locking pliers. Start off by loosening up these lug nut covers. And we'll fast forward as Don does this. And once those are all loosened up, you can pull the hubcap free. And now you want to loosen the lug nuts preliminarily, raise the vehicle and remove them the rest of the way. Unless you have air powered tools, you can do it while it's up in the air. And then to inspect your brakes, just run your finger along the rotor, check for any deep grooves. And you can look in here for the life of this brake pad. And then through here for the life of the other brake pad. Now remove these two 12 millimeter bolts and we'll fast forward as Don does that. In order to get the uh, caliper off you can either use a C-clamp like this and press in on the caliper and loosen it or you can also use a screwdriver and pry out between the caliper and the brake disc to reset the piston uh, make it easier to get it off. Just pull the caliper free and set it aside. Now pry out the brake pads. Now remove these two 18 millimeter bolts and just use a piece of pipe to help break it free. And then we'll just fast forward as Don removes those two bolts. Now pull your caliper bracket off. Pull the rotor off. And there should be a bracket underneath here held in with an eight millimeter bolt. So you'd want to remove that next, ours is missing, and then after that you can pull your e-brake shoes forward and then hit them down. Now you just want to pull it over the hub, now pull out on your emergency brake cable and just pull it from the bracket and then unhook it. Then you want to remove these four 18 millimeter bolts and you can only really use a wrench back here so just use an 18 millimeter wrench and then another wrench just for some extra leverage to help break them free and we'll just fast forward as Don removes those four bolts Hit the back of your backing plate with the hammer and this will help you pull this first front part for your e-brake forward. And then depending on the condition of your backing plate, you can either chisel it off with a screwdriver and a hammer and just break it into pieces and pull it off. Or you can use wire cutters and just snip at it until you can pull it off. But as long as it's rusted like this, it, it shouldn't be too hard to get it off. And we'll fast forward as Don just kind of breaks that apart um, and kind of a do as we say, not as we do. Make sure you're wearing gloves um, so you don't end up cutting your hands on the rusty metal. On 
On the right used to be our old backing plate. On the left is the new one from 1A Auto. And you can see it's a two-piece one that'll make it easier and quicker to install. Take your backing plate and you want to clip the slot on the side over your e-brake assembly. Then slide the whole backing plate up and push it back. Then take the top part and just slide it onto those tabs. and then slide the whole assembly back. Now take this rubber cap and feed it up in between the e-brake assembly and your backing plate and just push it into place. And then replace those four 18 millimeter bolts. And again, we'll just fast forward as Don does this. Pull out this cap on your e-brake adjuster and push this rod back in behind the backing plate and then push the cap back into place. Now clip in your emergency brake cable into that rod and then we recommend two people for this part. What you want to do is lock on to the spring with locking pliers and pull it forward and have another person pull the e-brake cable back into that bracket. Now just replace that bracket in the 8mm bolt and we'll fast forward as Don does this. Now take your e-brake shoes and put it back over the hub. And then line up the e-brake shoe tabs into the adjuster. And once you get one of them, just use a screwdriver to pry the other end in. Then use a flat blade screwdriver and a hammer if you need it to just turn the adjuster so that when you go to put the rotor on there's just a little bit of resistance. Slide your new rotor into place. And then twist on a lug nut to just hold the rotor in place while you put the caliper bracket back on. And then put your caliper bracket back into place and replace those two 18 millimeter bolts. And we'll fast forward as Don tightens those up. And you want to torque these to about 85 foot-pounds. Push your brake pads back into place. And then put your caliper back down into place. And replace those two 12 millimeter bolts. Now we'll just fast forward as Don does this and tightens them up. 
and you want to tighten these to about 30 foot-pounds. Put your wheel back into place. And then replace your lug nuts and tighten them preliminarily. And we'll fast forward as Don does this. Lower the vehicle and torque the lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds in a crossing pattern. Then replace that hubcap and tighten up each of your lug nut covers. And before taking the vehicle out on the road, you want to just pump the brake pedal until it firms up and then do a stopping test from 5 miles per hour, then 10 miles per hour. And you're all set. We hope this video helps you out. Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Please feel free to call us toll free 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person.